I'm Gunnar Jeanette. I'm one of the drivers for Rexy, the Porsche RS RAR with Project One AO Racing. Um, we're here at the 2023 Le Mans 24 Hours, the 100 year anniversary. And because that race is so special, we thought that we would bring Rexy from its normal habitat in America on the tracks of IMSA all the way over here to France to show it off to the 300,000 plus people that are going to be with us for this year's uh, 24 years of Le Mans. All right, so as the father of a T-Rex, you and your teammate PJ Hyatt, why don't you tell us about this? I mean, the livery has captured everyone's imagination as it should. We've been fortunate to have this in the U.S., but not only is Rexy here in France and Europe for the first time, but this is actually not the same identical Porsche you've been driving. You have Porsche experience here dating back to 2000, young man. So let's talk about this and then maybe we'll do a trip down memory lane. Yeah, so this is the, the RSR, which is the mid-engine 911. There's a small amount of mid-engine 911s that the Porsche factory has created to, uh, to race internationally uh, in the States and in the WEC. So it's, uh, it's very fortunate for us to, to have the chance to, to drive the RSR in its last year at Le Mans. Uh, if you follow for sports car racing, you know that next year the GTE cars are going away and it's going to GT3 based machinery like we run in the US. So hopefully next year we can bring our US GT3R over here. Uh, the major differences of those cars is the GT3R is still a rear engine Porsche, like they produce them for, uh, for road going models. Um, I myself got to drive the previous mid-engine 911 GT1 at the 24 hours of Daytona, uh, which was really, really special. So to, to sort of be in the next generation on song of GTE is uh, myself, I'm very proud of So we have some very, very wide bodywork here, which is part of this amazing, amazing GTE car. Why don't we go for a little walk down the side here and tell folks, again, not only do we have claws here from our T-Rex, but there are some extra body width to fit some big old tires and cool stuff. Yeah, you know, it's, it's extra body width and, and it really leads to Rexy's big hips. You know, don't focus on the small arms, but we will get our elbows out some. Uh, we do feature a, uh, a big tail coming up on the roof, which uh, carries up through the roof line. Um, but you can see there's there's so much aero on these modern GTE cars, uh, even for Le Mans, you know, we're trimming them out as, as much as we can to get up to over 300 kilometers or 187 miles an hour on the straights, which is pretty impressive. We've got, you know, all sorts of bells and whistles and options on the, on the steering wheel. It's mission control in there for us. Um, you know, I'd hate to see what the Porsche dealer uh, marks up for <laughs> with, with these packages. I think it's the, the Vysok Le Mans package. Um, the fun part too is this steering wheel does more up and down. I mean, you can customize this being one of the taller drivers too, Gunnar. Like, uh, you're not having to necessarily bash your knees completely when you climb in. Yeah, and, and previous generations of race cars, you always had a, a seat that was on sliders and the pedals wouldn't move and the steering wheel wouldn't move so you would just have to move the seat and then hope that the rest sort of worked out now uh, the fia has essentially mandated that the seat stays where it is for crash protection but then we have uh, adjustable pedals that we move on a lever over here and then we've got a, a steering wheel that we can sort of you know go through all sorts of stuff and it also helps to, to have the steering wheel kind of clear up out of the way so you can do those driver changes in the ideally 20 second range that they're, that they're looking for you. Um, another thing, you know, in a 24 hour race, sometimes stuff that you don't want to have happen happens. You might have sensor failures, wheel speeds, lambdas, that kind of stuff. Um, there's so much functionality on these, uh, particularly on that switch there, that we can actually go into and, and turn off certain parameters. So something that would have stopped you running in the past and, you know, come into the pit lane and, you know, start looking through lambdas or, you know, injector stuff or that kind of thing. We can literally just tell the car, yeah, you can ignore that. Wow. Uh, and then, um, you know, have the guys just pay attention more to it on the, on the live telemetry. When Porsche decided to go back to a mid-engine GTE race car, 
uh, in 2017, it was primarily to get the engine out of the way for more aerodynamics. So by shifting the engine forward and the gearbox, you know, essentially swapping the position, they're able to get this giant diffuser here. And by getting all of that air coming through the diffuser, it's way more uh, essentially free downforce that you don't have to pay as much of a drag penalty. So it, it enables us to, to trim out the rear wing and, uh, and still have the same amount of downforce to really gain top speed. This is my ninth time racing here in the 24 hours of Le Mans. I've got to do historic editions of the race from 2000 all the way to now. Had stints in LMP1 with Panos, LMP2 with other manufacturers, have driven a, a different brand. But to be back here with Porsche for the 100 year anniversary and the swan song of the GTE car, and then on top of that to br be bringing Rexy uh, here to Le Mans for its first participation. I, I just can't be more excited for myself and PJ and Mateo and, uh, and all of the Project One AO crew. We certainly hope that uh, we get Rexy across the finish line. I'm sure, it, you know, his teeth isn't, aren't gonna be as, uh, as pearly white, you know, maybe he'll be uh, missing a finger or two, <laughs> but, um, yeah, we're, we're really looking forward to, uh, to this great race and our great little green dinosaur.